Hey there, everyone. This is Jonathan from Dread Central. I'm here with legendary scare actor Charmer and also <laughs> Haunters director John Schnitzer. Hello. Hello there. How are you doing? Great. Awesome. You're we awesome. Had, we just had the screening yesterday, so I feel pretty great. How'd it go? It was amazing. amazing. It was amazing. It was a world premiere. The audience was packed. They, they actually had to move us into the biggest theater, and uh, it was a theater four in the Alamo Draft House, and the reaction was so overwhelming. People were laughing at all the right spots. They were cheering. They were sh you could hear people get shocked and it's surprised. It was a great crowd. It was a great crowd. People, people were lined up to meet Char. People were in tears. They were so inspired by her story. They were lined up to go <laughs> hug her. It was. It, I'm still really overwhelmed by the whole thing. It was amazing. It's and plus, Fantastic Fest has this kind of mentality behind it of not only you know bringing great genre films, but also of telling great stories. That's the thing about Evram, who who runs it. Yeah. He wrote a description about Haunters the Art of the Scare on his website, and uh, when we read it, we were like, he gets it. He completely, he's, he is so, you get his enthusiasm and his passion. When he did the introduction for me, I was getting choked up while he's introducing me. I'm like, <laughs> I want to meet that guy. <laughs> what a talented filmmaker. It was awesome. And Fantastic Fest, what's so much fun is like, wherever you go, in Fantastic Fest, it's like these are more best friends for life because we all. Yeah. Have, I saw another guy wearing a Freddy Krueger shirt with the uh, syringe fingers, the dare to keep kids off drugs. Oh, from, from uh, Dream Warriors. Yeah, yeah, London, yeah. the 1888 shirt. I was like, there's another guy with the same exact shirt. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's just so much fun. I, I this is like the best festival we could possibly have our world premiere at. I'm so excited. And plus, they're all genre fans. Like that's the thing. You're it's it's not just showing a movie to you know random people. It's showing a movie to your people. To the people that will go to something that you do and they will appreciate it, they will understand the work behind it. Well, what was interesting at this festival is every a lot of people here have horror, fan, or horror fans that yeah. love horror movies. We're used to dealing with people that go to haunted houses, it's a little bit different, mm -hmm. but some overlap. But it just seemed like all the people here, the horror fans and the people that weren't horror fans, really reacted well. Um, like totally saw what he was saying in his movie and that was like really cool to see you know things that we think are important and then that getting translated out to other people and then getting it so that was yeah cool. and there's something about this time of year that non-horror fans suddenly become horror fans and they want to immerse themselves and they kind of dive into that world well they dip their toes <laughs> into that world and they kind of get a feel for it and the moment it's over they leave but the people uh, like myself that are lifelong and year-long horror fans you know for us it's just another way to enter into that world that we love so much but see it from a different perspective so I want I was wondering if you could just tell me from you know in your world how you approach horror and haunted houses and scare factors and everything that you do well, for me, this is like a year-round thing at this yeah. point. I do horror and haunts uh, between haunted events and haunted houses and stuff like that and movies and TV. I work year-round in this. But our main thing is the haunted industry, which is happening now. And that's what we call our season. Yeah. It starts in August and it goes till the, the middle of November now. Yeah. So we're, we get really heavy then. And like you said, that's when other people come into our industry or in to see us and we need them. They're our victims. They're the ones that come <laughs> see us and let us play with them. So yeah. we really, really like to have people like that. I mean, if not, what are we gonna do? Scare ourselves? Yeah, and, and, and it, brings up a really, it brings up a really good point, which is sort of the level of the haunts that can happen. Because you have the ones that are safe, you have the ones where the non-horror fans, they go and they get their scares, you know, they scream a little bit, but they come out, you know, relatively unscathed. They may, you know, have, you know, be afraid to turn off the lights, but that's it. But then you have the haunts that are really intense, the ones where you have to sign waivers, the ones where you are putting yourself at risk and I want to get both of your perspectives on this what is the place of each of those and why do why does that community need such a diverse range of experiences well horror has like just horror films in general mm -hmm. have like a thousand subgenres yeah from a horror comedy to torture porn to thriller to body horror when you look at it it, it just goes on and on it's so diverse yeah so it's only a matter of time to now haunted houses reflect all the subgenres of horror. I mean, what's interesting is to see how it's evolved, and that's one of the things we caught in the movie. We were noticing that um, in 2001, that's when Halloween made the most amount of money it ever made, was in 2001, right after September 11th. 
It was beat out in 2008 during the financial meltdown. And now we're on track to having the biggest Halloween of all time, the biggest haunt season of all time, most, most successful that it's ever been. People always turn to horror for escape. And these experiences, it's like horses. It's catharsis. Look, the, the, the great George Romero, who we miss all, so much already, I mean, all of his films had a message. It was always holding the mirror to society. It was always showing us, you know, or, or you know, consumerism consuming you, Dawn yeah. Dead, you know, all, Night of the Living Dead. That was amazing, the whole message with, with race relations in Night of the Living Dead. And that came out just like, what, a week before Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated? Something I mean, that he very always, close. And that's the thing with these haunts. They're reflecting our worst fears so that we can get scared, um, scream our heads off, and face our worst fears, and then we get out, we feel better. Yeah. But here's the thing, it's like, there's the haunts where you laugh, like mm -hmm. scream and laugh, yeah. and then you laugh at how much you were just screaming. Mm -hmm. And then there's the haunts that you scream, and maybe you cry yeah. and freak out of it. So now we're looking at the rise of extreme haunts. And my feeling is you gotta have a safe word. If you have a way of getting out, if yeah. there's a way where you can just say the safe word and get out, then you can be as adventurous as you wanna be. Mm -hmm. You can try just about anything and, and, and give it a shot. But well, what would be your safe word? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know what you would scream in the safe middle word. of a terrifying would, environment. Safe word. I would have to be safe word because I would forget anything else. Yeah, I'd just start screaming like, banana! Yeah. I would forget banana. I would yeah. be like, peaches, apple. That's blackout. That's blackout. Blackout has a safe word. And, and they do say, they, their safe word is safety. You know, and people yell that. And then you could just get out. And the only haunt that exists that doesn't have that is McKinney Manor. Okay. So they're the only one without a safe word. And why do you think they're willing to go that extra step further into that sort of depraved world? <laughs> I mean, I asked Russ, Russ McKamey from McKamey Manor. So McKamey Manor takes eight hours to go through. And if you Jesus. want to get out, he doesn't <laughs> let you out. I know, no one's made it the full eight hours. But what they do is he, they stop when they feel like you've just completely collapsed and you can't do any more. I guess when he feels like, well, this person's probably going to be scarred for life, we're done. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's doing his job. He's doing his job. <laughs> you know. I asked him, why don't you have a safe word? And he kept saying, because they're not going to see half the stuff I have here. It's so exciting. It's so great. Hmm. I, it's I, very sadistic. It's a trip. I just yeah. like, there was this one time when um, this woman went through, her name is uh, Christina. She flew from Kuwait. She's an American contract worker. She flies in from Kuwait um, to do as many haunts as she can. Yeah. She flew in from a King Manor, and at one point, she just went to shock. And I said to Russ, I think she's in shock. And he's like, really? I'm like, look, she's not, like, hello, hello, and she had no response. We took her into the house. I sat her on the, in the living room, and I'm just watching her, because I'm thinking, oh, my God, what, what's going on here? I've been <laughs> 30 minutes later, she snaps out of it. She goes, why am I not in the haunt anymore? I said, because you went to shock. She goes, I flew 19 hours for this. Put me back in the hot. <laughs> and then Russ is like, hey, how you doing? He's like, screw you. Put me back in the hot. And she's yelling. And he's like, hey, hey. You're being kind of mean here. And she's like, get me back in the hot. Then she does four more hours. And then she went back two or three more times. She flew back two or three more times to do McKinney Manor again and again. This sounds like something that I actually kind of want to try, but at the same time, I have <laughs> don't no, do it, no Don't do it. No, don't do it. Don't do it. So here we go. That's a good question. Why do you say, no, I don't like it? You've done, you obviously are... This is your life and blood, um, literally, in this <laughs> industry. Um, where do you draw the line? Well, well I, I'm kind of different than most haunters. I've been yeah. working in this almost 40 years. So I started with traditional haunts and moved into some extreme haunts and some theatrical haunts, which is the kind of place where I like to be. Right now I'm working at a show, not like this, but I work at a yeah. show in Orange County in Fullerton called The 17th Door. And what that is, is that's where extreme haunts and theatrical haunts cross over. Okay. We have a safe word, it's mercy. If somebody says mercy, they can either skip the room or leave altogether. We have people that get into the first room where it's nothing. It's just like a waiver you're signing and they can't handle it in their mercy and they're, they want to leave. It's the apprehension of what's to come. It's in their mind, which is yeah. really fun to play with. You know, That's you can exactly play what you with have your, to do. Right. Yeah. You can play with your victims and you can have a lot of fun with them and scare them. And they know in the back of their mind they can always get out. Mm -hmm. They can always, there's, there's that kind of thing where it just changes it when you get rid of that safe word, when what Russ does, yeah. I don't like that at all. 
I do love extreme haunts, and there's a lot of them that I've worked at and gone to, and I really do like them. See, and I appreciate all this coming up, because I'm that, for lack of a better word, I'm that dick that when I go through haunted houses, you know, they'll jump out and they'll try and scare me, and I just immediately get close, I'm like, oh, that production value is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. I'm, so and I don't get scared, and I'm always trying funny. to find it. Like, people are always like, no, this one's really going to get, it doesn't. And then I just walk through and I get really close. So I'm always on the lookout for something that will kind of get under my skin, but then at the same time, it's that feeling of, am I actively looking for something that is going to hit me negatively? Like, do I really want to go down this path? So when we go to haunted houses, uh, John and I just went yeah. to Universal, like the first exactly. time we go through, mm -hmm. we're going through and everyone's scaring on us and, you know, it's really fun. But like yeah. you go through a couple more times and because I'm in the industry, I'm looking at the actors, I'm looking at how the scares are produced, I'm looking at the scenery, their special effects. So I go through on a technical, you know, technical after I yeah. go through. But I, I let it happen. I enjoy it too. Mm -hmm. I like to be on the other side. So I totally understand it. And you're not being a dick. The only time we think you're a dick is when you reach up and you uh, okay, take right. a... Take All right. right. That's Never done that. If you yeah. like, if you like and you go through and you're enjoying yourself and you're looking around, we're totally into that. Everyone reacts differently. There yeah. are the people that fall to the ground crying, screaming. That's got to be gratifying in its it own is. way. It is. <laughs> uh, but, you know, other people are going through it and they're like, oh, look at that, look at that. And they love it. That's also good for us. It's okay. only the people that are are being dicks that are taking hits All at right. us. Those are the ones we don't like. Yeah. But everybody else, we love them. Let everybody come in and play with us. We, we like that. Gotcha. So uh, I want to kind of step away from your phone for just one second and talk about the experience overall here at Fantastic Fest and oh, what you're doing, what you're doing, you know, outside. So like some movies that you've seen that stand out, or some experiences that you had that were just like, hey, this was really cool. Look, the opening night party where there was a pillow fight that broke out and feathers <laughs> went everywhere. I think I still have feathers somewhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like glitter. That it's not great. going away. <laughs> that was so much fun. But the short films. From the program Short Fuse. Yeah. There were some short films. There was a Tooth Fairy short film that made me jump out of my seat. That was I, fantastic. When I got, when I landed and I took the shuttle from the airport, I was with the the, the directors in the van. So, yeah, they're really great guys. They were great. The, the film from Uruguay, right? Yes. Yep. And the, um, there were a few from Australia that were so creepy. Yeah. So, oh my God, they got really got out of my skin. I, I loved it. I, I, it was just a great curated block of short films mm -hmm. that were creepy and scary and funny. The short film that played before mine, That's what I was Mystery, Day. Mystery Day. Oh, oh that, was that was great. one of the best short films I've ever seen ever. That was yeah. great. Ever. And no one was here from that film, and it's like we knew they told us it was going to play before your film, so we're like waiting for his film to come up. And then this one comes up, and we were like, you know, we're kind of preoccupied on what's going on with mm -hmm. his film, and that like total took us totally out and into that movie. We so laughed out loud. We were laughing. We screamed. The whole audience jumped, and then they show my movie. It was like the greatest intro to my it, movie it, it ever. It was. It really was. It was also perfect. perfect. We went to the. Uh, the fantastic debate last yeah, night. Yeah, the boxing, the that boxing was match fun. with what Udo was there. Udo what kicked the ass. Was there? That was crazy. <laughs> like, Udo comes out, and I'm like. Udo is on stage. I love that Udo was like, I need some music, and they try playing like gothic vampire music, and he's like, no, 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 give me the fight music, and he starts playing heavy metal, and he starts like jumping around and moshing. What the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs> this is like the most fun film festival ever. I mean, I'm, I can't. There's just so many. I mean, Leonard Malton sitting down with uh, Vince Vaughn. That was a great interview. That was really um, good. And Doug Doug Benson's podcast. That was a lot of fun too. There's just so much. Fun stuff going on. Yeah, just, I, and, and all the art everywhere. It's great, incredible. It's an amazing, all kind of immersive experience. Like if you like horror, fantasy, anything Halloween related, you have to like be here. Yeah, because these are your people, and they're it's in true. full force. They've come from all over, and they're so excited, and they're so energetic. Even waiting in line for something is exciting. Yeah, okay. because you just talk to people, you get involved in the, and you make like instant connections with people, which is yeah. really, really neat. Absolutely. Um, you always see what good. shirt you should be buying next, <laughs> like what shirt, what pin. I'm like, hey, hey, hey where'd I get that? You know, where, where do I get it? Oh, I mean, we're like trading pins. I brought a ton <laughs> of buttons with me and everyone's like, oh, this is awesome. Like, I know my people. <laughs> yeah. have a pin. So, uh, one last question, because I know you got a lot more interviews coming today. What's next? What's next for you? What's next for you? I don't know. I, I, I think of my life as riding on a wild horse and it takes me to whatever direction's next. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more, as I'm getting older and my 
injuries from haunting are getting worse and worse and I'm in more pain. I'm looking to do more things outside of the haunting itself and more into like films, TV, that kind of thing, or okay. working with other younger haunters and helping them get into the industry. Okay, so taking on almost like a mentor role. Yeah, I started doing that now, and um, I'm, I want to go that way, and I also am looking into doing more performance stuff too. Okay. But less haunting itself. Yeah. But Wonderful. staying in that genre. Of course. Once once you're in, you can't leave. It's in my blood. Yeah. She'll end up doing like the TED Talks of haunting. I'm yeah. telling you. Like, <laughs> when we, whenever we go to haunts, all these people line up like, to hug her. They're like, oh, Char, you're yeah. the best. <laughs> um, so for me, I have actually have a, have a virtual reality project that's out right now. Great. And it's called Flatline Experience. Okay. You go through somebody's real near, near-death experience. And you, you see hear, it from their perspective. You can see it from their perspective. You Creepy. hear their story. It's a true story. Mm-hmm. And as you hear them talk about this spiraling vortex, it spirals into the room and sucks you in. And you just, it's, there's times when you feel like you're dropping down. There's times when you're floating. It's a part where you go backwards to the universe. So it's, uh, I've I've been wanting to do virtual reality with near-death experiences Mm -hmm. for a long time. Okay. I have a background in 3D. So this is our first feature film through, um, my wife and I have a company called The Brain Factory. Mm -hmm. And we've, Tim Burton hired us to do, um, President Obama's first Halloween party at the White House. We produced the 3D ghost illusions of the presidents in the White House. Oh, that must have been amazing. It was the coolest thing ever. That was the cool. <laughs> it was only the coolest thing ever. And so we've been really excited to do something in virtual reality where we can really unleash 3D and really yeah. crank up the volume. So because 3D, like the, like like horror, you can really manipulate the scares. You can actually manipulate someone's emotions mm-hmm. by the intensity of the 3D. Yeah, and it's really fun and. Yeah, we're working on uh, pitching some more projects, and Haunters comes out October 3rd. There we so go. October so 3rd. That's yeah. a question. Uh, so October 3rd, where can people see Haunters? Okay, so October 3rd, you're going to be able to get it across a lot of different platforms. If you go to hauntersmovie.com, hauntersmovie.com, um, you'll see the pre-order button, and you can pre-order it on iTunes, Amazon. Um, it's it's going to be all over the place there. It's also... Uh, part of Fantastic Fest, little satellite film festival. Yeah, the ones that are going around the country. So we're going to be yeah. at Alamo Draft House in Brooklyn, Alamo Draft House in San Francisco, and we're in Denver, Colorado. And we're also in Beyond Fest on October 3rd in LA. That's our LA premiere, is October 3rd at the Egyptian Theater. And we're going to have uh, Donald, uh, one of the haunters from the movie, is building a haunt for the red carpet. You have to oh, go wow. through the haunt to get into the movie. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be a great celebration. Sounds like everything is just going perfectly for the both of you. So, uh, John, Shar, thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. And best of luck with everything. And I uh, can't wait to see what comes next. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care, man. Take care. Take care. Have a good one. I'll just put that in. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs> <It's> so gross. <laughs>